Join Kids Hat Family. Tia, aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no! I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid? Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Mermaid Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother called her to her room. Come, my darling. Today you have turned 15. And from now onwards, you can go to the world above. Just remember, the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, Grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away. She was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her. Aboard it were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16. The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince. She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her. She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage. The ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up. The sailors tried to stir it to safety but many men including the prince fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. Don't worry, you are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help.
When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day, she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. Away. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become foam in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go! In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I have never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe she has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the court. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. 
little mermaid was heartbroken she thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her and so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family When the prince saw her he came up to her Hello young lady I have seen you in my dreams Who are you In his heart the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me. I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her, but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you because of you I have found the love of my life. Please always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together she decided not to pursue the prince any more he belonged to another woman although her heart ached to let him go she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day soon it was evening the second sunset was about to happen the little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea As she stood there looking at the prince and his princess she heard some voices behind her she turned around to see her sisters were there in the water but all of them had very short hair now instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier sisters what are you doing here We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of her hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newly weds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. Goodbye, my love. And so for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life. and join the sea as foam Tia this is such a beautiful story it shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince
thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister Tia. Tia, yesterday in our class, my friend Ben forgot to bring one of his textbook and Ted offered to share his textbook with him. Ben promised Ted to help him in learning football after school. But after school, when Ted asked Ben to help as promised, instead of helping, Ben left for his home. That's bad. One should always stand by their promises. But Tia, today again Ben forgot his textbook and when he asked Ted to help, Ted refused. Tofu We should be sensitive towards every human being. You know, we should always help people around. Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in the kingdom of a very humble king. The princess was so pampered by her father that she turned out to be a little proud of the fact that she is a princess. Many a times the king asked her to be more humble towards the people around her because that's the way a princess should be. I know, my little princess, that you are my pampered child. But you should be little more empathetic towards other people. Everybody is same. It's just that some are fortunate, some are not. But the princess just ignored what her father had to say and went out to play with the golden ball that her father had gifted her on her birthday. She loved the ball but no sooner had she started playing that her ball bounced and went into a pond. Oh God! My favourite golden ball! I would give anything to get back my favourite ball. Anything! Hearing the princess cry out loudly, a frog leaped up and sat on a lotus leaf and said, Princess, I just saw what happened. I will get the golden ball back for you. But you have to promise me something. How in the world did the slimy frog talk? The princess only wanted her ball back, so she hurriedly said yes. What is it that you want in return? I want you to take me back to your palace and pamper me. I would eat with you, play with you and sleep in bed with you. The princess was horrified at the very idea and had no intention of doing any such thing. She agreed to the condition as she thought the frog would not be able to reach the palace on his own and she had no intention of taking him along with her. She told him to hurry and get the ball back and waited with bated breath for her golden ball. The frog jumped into the pond and in no time at all came back with the golden ball. She took the ball from him and ran back to her palace as fast as she could. Princess, come back! You promised to take me with you! You can't break your promise! But the princess ignored to his calling and ran as fast as she could. She was relieved when she reached her room.
and soon forgot all about the frog. At night, while she was having dinner with her father, there was a loud knock on the door. Open the door, a oh princess. It's me, the frog from the pond. You promised to keep me with you. Being a true princess, you should keep up to your promise now. Who is that and what does he want? The princess, being a little scared of her father, told him about the afternoon incidents. And how she broke her promise. You are a true princess, my love, and you should keep up to your promise, no matter what. Feeling helpless, the princess opened the door and let the frog enter. He hopped on to the seat next to her and asked her to let him eat from her plate. The frog ate till his tummy was full. But the princess couldn't eat a single bite thinking about the slimy frog eating from her plate. Then the frog asked her to carry him to her bedroom and let him sleep in her bed. Unwillingly, she picked him up in her hands and went upstairs. The frog jumped on her bed and snuggled cozily in her huge soft bed. The next morning, the princess got up to find the frog missing from her bed. Happily, she hopped from her bed thinking that the ordeal was over. As the night fell, the knock again happened and again the frog ate from her plate and slept in her bed. Feeling sad about sharing her food and bed, she went to her father. and asked him if she could stop now. The king again told her that a promise was a promise and cannot be broken. It was the third night when the frog came in again to eat and sleep in her bed. But the next morning, the princess was astonished to see that the frog was not in her bed. And a handsome young prince was standing next to her bed. What? Who are you? Where is the slimy frog? Dear princess, it's me, the frog. A witch cast a spell on me that could be broken only if a princess would let me eat in her plate and sleep in her bed for three nights. You broke that spell by keeping your promise and here I am standing in front of you. I am the prince from the neighboring country. Would you like to be my wife? Not able to resist the handsome prince, she said yes, but had something more to say. Oh prince, I would love to be your wife, 
but how would you forgive me for being so rude to you she was guilty like hell but the prince was a humble man he said oh my dear princess i can understand your reasons and i am ready to forgive you but you have to promise me that in future you won't judge anybody by the way one looks or the job one does everyone is equal and that's how they should be treated equally saying this the prince took her in his arms and decided to take her to his kingdom where they lived happily ever after oh tia you are right we should always keep our promises and help people in need thanks for the lovely moral story come tofu let's go and play some games now Boys in my class are very mean to me. They are so tall and big that I always have to listen to whatever they say. I am afraid to disagree with them. Size has nothing to do with courage, Tofu. You don't have to be afraid just because you are short. Have you heard the story of Peter Pan? Japan Once upon a time in London the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children Wendy John and Michael at home After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed, she went to read a book. She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. "Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying?" "My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me." "Don't worry. Come inside." Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there. with my fairy tinkerbell oh what a wonderful idea let me wake up john and michael too could you teach us how to fly yes of course get them we will all fly together and so it was five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards neverland As they flew over the island, Peter Pan told the children more about his homeland. That island is Neverland. All the children who get lost come and stay with Tinkerbell and me. 
The Indians also live in Neverland. The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island. And a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone. Captain Hook? Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles. And rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John and Michael, Peter Pan led them in through a small opening in a tree. Inside the tree was a large room with children inside it. Some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone, this is Wendy, John and Michael. They will be staying with us from now on. Hello Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there, or else I will throw each one of you into the water! The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge. That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said, if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed, although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly.
The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch and onto the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up. He swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. Quickly, he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said he never wanted to grow up so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime Peter Pan. I will Wendy, promise. and he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Thank you, Tia. I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. What's wrong, Tofu? I can't sleep. Would a bedtime story help? Yeah, I guess. The Ugly Duckling Once near a beautiful pond, there lived a handsome duck couple. They were very excited as the babies were about to get hatched from the eggs. The papa duck was so eager to see his babies that all he could do was roam here and there in anxiety. Suddenly, what they hear is sweet little quack quacks. 
coming from the nest and the papa duck just rushes to the nest to catch the first glimpse of his babies. Oh my god! They are so lovely. Suddenly, a hoarse quack comes from below Mama Duck. Quack. You are so ugly and pale. You can't be our baby. The papa and mama duck along with their four babies sail away, far away from the ugly duckling, leaving him behind in dismay and all alone. The poor duckling doesn't know what's wrong with him. He checks his wings, his beak, his feet, but all looks fine. Suddenly, he turns around and sees his reflection in the pond. And what he sees sends him complete disappointment. Nobody loves me. What would I do now? Where would I go? The ugly duckling starts walking in complete sadness. So many days, weeks and months pass by and the poor ugly duckling wanders all alone in the deep forest. Suddenly, he stops and feels extremely cold. Oh, it is so cold! I wish I had a warm house too! Suddenly, a huge ball of snow comes rolling from behind and the poor duckling gets caught in that and starts screaming for help. A woodcutter cutting the woods in a nearby place hears the scream of the duckling and runs for help. Oh poor thing! Come here! You need something warm to drink. The woodcutter picks up the ugly duckling and keeps him in the warmth of his overcoat. He takes him home and keeps him wrapped in a warm blanket right in front of the fireplace. Don't worry poor little thing, I will take care of you. And like this many years pass by and the ugly duckling grew under the care of the woodcutter. But one thing he made sure, never did he see his reflection again. One day, on a sunny afternoon, he was wandering around the sides of a lake. Suddenly, he sees a wedge of swans swimming in the pond. Look at those swans! They are so beautiful! I wish I was a beautiful duck too. I have no friends because I am so ugly. I feel oh so lonely. To his amazement, he sees the wedge of swans coming towards him. What he sees is the most beautiful swan ever. Hey, we have never seen you around. Are you new here? No, I live nearby with the woodcutter. It's just that I don't come out often. Why is that so? Because I'm an ugly duck. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to his surprise, he sees them laughing at him. He decides to turn back when suddenly he hears the voice of the beautiful swan. Wait, where are you going? See, even you guys made fun of me. 
That's the reason I never come out. We laughed because you called yourself a duck. What do you mean? Yes, you are not a duck. You are a swan. And I haven't seen such a handsome swan ever in my life. He couldn't believe of what he just heard and stood there in a state of shock. And after a few seconds, managed to say, What? The beautiful swan held the hand of the duck and took him near the pond. See yourself. You are a swan. The ugly duckling very reluctantly bends over the water because he doesn't want to see the ugly him. But what he sees leaves him in total disbelief. He is not a duck. He is a swan. A handsome young swan. I am a swan. He jumps and flies and swims in sheer happiness and then suddenly stops to thank the beautiful swan. Thank you so much for making me know who I am. <laughs> so now that you know you are a swan, would you join our wedge? We would live together as a happy family. Yes, I would love to do that. And then the ugly duckling, oops, the handsome swan jumps into the water with the rest of the swans and swims proudly with them. So the poor duck was never a duck, a swan all throughout? <laughs> yeah, and that's what the moral of the story is. A diamond doesn't know its worth till it's polished. Aha! Uh -huh. Good night, Tofu. It's time to sleep now. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.